Hey everybody, my name is Charlie and welcome to the Below and Beyond preview for Surviving Mars. I hope you're having a great day today. Special thank you to Paradox for sending me out this uh, copy of this early and sponsoring this video so that I can show this to you with a little bit more depth, just a little bit, than uh, what they showed in their little uh, preview videos that they've released. So this is a colony that I've set up. It's got all the bells and whistles that you'd expect for a late game colony, but it's not really that big. It's only taking up this much space in the map. On the surface, this space is incredibly stable, but I mean that literally. On the surface, this is stable. We've got a couple of wanders going in. I've got the space elevator, the mole hole maxed out, all these things, right? So these guys taken care of. That's going to allow us to focus on the new features in the below and beyond. I almost always say this beyond and below. I don't know why. Below and beyond DLC. So what is in this new expansion? Well, I've got a whole bunch of rockets here, as you can see. And uh, these are asteroid rockets. These, these rockets here are going up to all of the different asteroids and stuff that we can discover. We got a new building here. This is called the Recon Center. It's gonna help us discover asteroids that are passing by Mars. And we sometimes we'll get minor discoveries and stuff that kind of pop up and we can read about those too. But when there is an asteroid that is of significance or uh, that we could possibly travel to, we'll get this view message button here. And in this case, Nork BC-37 has been found. This is an S-type asteroid and it says it's mostly composed of exotic minerals. Now this is the new resource that's been made available in Surviving Mars, and that's what we're ultimately gonna be trying to get uh, on these different asteroids. We can also get metals, rare metals, other types of materials, and a lot of times water is available on these as well which will allow us to extract exotic minerals using uh, people and little habitats and stuff that you can set up on, uh, on asteroids as well. I have been pretty much doing it unmanned because I think it's pretty sufficient. Now we can plan a visit to this if we'd like to, or we can do a detailed scan and really get into the details of what is in this asteroid. So first off, I'm just going to say plan a visit real quick. Take a look at the, the interface here. So we've got three that are around Mars right now. There's these yellow circles. This is the new one we just got. And right now we expect to see these, but we don't know for sure exactly what's in them. We have our travel time, which is two hours. Normally this is much higher, but I have pretty much every uh, advancement in the tech tree done. Let me just show you that really quick. If you have green, uh, the Green Planet DLC, you'll have the terraforming tree. This recon and expansion will be to the left of that. If you don't have this, well, you could still see it to the, all the way to the left uh, with biotech and stuff as well. And this tech tree features lots of different technologies that you can use on asteroids as well as beneath the surface. We're going to look at that in a little bit. So um, currently I'm in the process of, you know, getting random technologies, but uh, one of these technologies is going to allow me to have a much more efficient travel time uh, over to asteroids as we see them. So my travel time is lower. I also have one that extends our detection so that we'll have more time remaining to extract resources. So I have 10 souls to do this too. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit scan. This is gonna spend electronics in our recon center. Uh, it's 20 electronics to hit this scan button. But when we do that, we get a breakdown of exactly what's here. We know to the amount how much is here. Exotic minerals, there are 85 of them. That's a pretty good one. And there are two deposits. So we can now set up a visit for this. We're gonna hit visit asteroid and we can select one of our rockets that are sitting there on the pad ready to go. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and select Griffin 1. So we're going to prepare this rocket. Now, I also have a cargo capacity upgrade that's that's been implemented from research. So I can haul 120,000 kilograms in this rocket. Without that, I think you're limited to 75,000. And you can toggle that on and off on a per rocket basis too. So uh, this is going to have lots of exotic minerals and stuff. So what we're going to want to do is bring, uh, and we may also find anomalies here too. We, we could we could po possibly see that. So I like to bring a, a transport or a RC Explorer on a journey too, just in case there are any anomalies that we can get. Now we can bring prefabs. There are these new micro G auto extractors. This is a new item in the game that uh, with research, you can build your own, but I've went ahead and I've just ordered some prefabs already. So uh, since there are two deposits here, let's just bring two of them, that's fine. You can also build your own with 10 polymers and four machine parts. Uh, and yes, they do take maintenance as well. So make sure you bring some uh, uh, 
machine parts if you're gonna be hanging around for a long time usually you won't get to the maintenance cycle if you don't have a whole lot of time it doesn't matter but uh, with 10 souls or 15 souls or however long you have if you have the extended time and there's a lot of resources down you're probably gonna want to bring some extra stuff there are also some upgrades we can do to those too so just to prepare for that I'm gonna go ahead and bring some extra resources and let's make sure we have enough for power as well I'll bring six drones with me this is 119,000 of 120,000 cargo that seems pretty yeah, that seems pretty expensive, actually. Let's just bring this down a little bit. Uh, okay, we're bringing fuel as well. 35 fuel. We're going to need this to refuel our rockets so that we can lift off later. You have to bring fuel for the return trip or you can't come back. All right, so we're going to hit request. And that's going to be that. Now, my drones are going to go ahead and load up that rocket. And uh, that rocket will go ahead and lift off towards that asteroid whenever it wants to. Uh, or whenever it's ready. Now, we have another one here. This is uh, Uneku, I guess, BN-15. This is a P-type asteroid. It does not feature exotic minerals, but it's got a lot of other stuff on there. So if we wanted to go get rare metals from this or other types of resources, we have lots of water. That's going to allow us to perform electrolysis on the surface of asteroids, and that's how you get oxygen and stuff for a manned, a little temporary manned habitat on the surface of asteroids, because obviously you can't use moxies. Uh, so you're going to perform electrolysis with water to do that instead. Almost 15 souls worth of time on that one so that's pretty good but there's no exotic minerals i'm not as interested in that what i am interested in is another one called hanoi this one has 34 exotic minerals so we're gonna prepare a rocket for this one too let's choose griffin 4 really quick again there might be anomalies so i'm gonna just bring an explorer that i have extra and let's go ahead and add a few more of these polymers add a few more metals just to make sure we can have the power that we want and I may need the upgrade, although there's 11 souls. I'm not going to need to upgrade with electronics here. Yeah, and then uh, yeah, we only need one extractor because there's only one deposit. So whatever. Uh, all right, so we'll go ahead and request that rocket go there too. So these rockets are going to pack up their stuff and they're going to head to these asteroids. And we're going to take a look at what that looks like as soon as they're ready to go. But while they're doing that, let's take a look at the second element of our DLC package here. Let me just real quick. I'm space Y, so let me just take that rocket off so it's not blinking at me. Let's take a look at the second element for this DLC, and that is below ground, because this is a whole new map that you can use to expand your colony, and it has some drawbacks, it has some benefits, and we're going to talk about that too. Real quick before we do that, take a look at the bottom right corner of the screen. You're going to see a new interface. This is Mars. This is the Mars Underground, which we're about to go to. And then every asteroid that you have currently in range will also have its own icon. And this will change in color depending on how much time is left, whether you're there, and also give you little pips if there are any uh, mission critical notifications. Uh, for example, we have an additional notification here, but it's blue. It's not really that big of a deal. It doesn't really matter. We can dismiss them. It goes away. But on the underground, we have a red notification. So let's take a look really quick at our underground base. This really quickly loads a new map, and you can see it's low storage is the red little notification. It has low power storage. Fair enough. Uh, we're going to go ahead and just maybe open up one of these Sterlings. No big deal. Now, I've got a scrubber network down here, and uh, it's scrubbing uh, lots of different things. We're extracting some uh, concrete down here. It was a pretty good deposit. We also have access to a really high water source, so this will let us keep going and do water for a little while. You cannot send water down below, and you can't send water back up Research either. And that complete. also goes with power. At least on my beta version of this game, we cannot do that. Now, I say this, I, I, I need to point this out. My version that I'm going to show you here is a beta version, just like everyone else that's got videos early. Uh, however, they've made lots of advancements and improvements and bug fixes uh, since I started the save file. And as a result, my save will not have some of the things that yours will have. Namely, this is the underground map. It's very dark. We haven't explored it a whole lot yet. And there aren't very many resources available in my game. When your game, you'll have resources scattered out throughout this place. But let's go ahead and just uh, see if we can't uh, find a way to clear ourselves a path here. So throughout the course of playing your game, you're going to get Mars quakes. 
Mars quakes are going to cause cave-ins. Let's take a look really quick at what cave-ins look like. These ones are, again, bug fixes are fixed in your version, my beta version, not so much. Um, but cave-ins can happen like this, and you'll need to research the permits necessary to allow you to clear these cave-ins. Once you do, drones can take care of these cave-ins, and that will allow you to, uh, to proceed forward. I have these permits already done. If you would like to be proactive, you can go ahead and build these support struts. The support struts are going to hold up the place and ensure that no cave-ins happen within this uh, cone radius. So if you cover the whole place with support struts, um, you're going to be fine on cave-ins. You don't have to worry about it. While you're down here, you're also protected from all the surface disasters like dust storms, meteor showers, etc. You don't have to deal with those because you're underground, right? but you also cannot take advantage of a lot of the cheaper things that you can get away with on the surface, like solar power and wind power. So you'll need to bring more expensive power resources uh, and build them down here. You might wanna wait till you have sterling generators to come down here. With some research, you can also get shuttle hubs working down here too. And so shuttles can be, uh, pilots and stuff can be trained to fly around in the underground and work just like they do above. So I've got one of those running here too. Uh, my water source is making fuel. Now. To build things that are more than just your basic, your basic stuff, like a concrete extractor or a water extractor, to build most underground things that are special from this DLC, you're going to need that special resource, exotic minerals. Now, right now, I have 261 of them because I've done plenty of things with asteroids in the past. Uh, so uh, I've built up a little bit of a supply and I brought them down here so that I could show them for you, show them to you. So to build domes down here, first you're going to need to research that. Second, you're going to need to spend concrete metals and exotic minerals. And man, domes are kind of expensive. I don't know if they're going to balance that in later versions of the game, but right now it's 40 of these suckers to build one of these domes. So I'm going to build this pretty much like right here because I want to take advantage of this really very high grade, lots and lots of rare metals here. I want to take advantage of these riches. So I'm going to drop a dome right here. I'm going to go about like that, I think. So the drone hub here and all the drones that are here they're going to get to work building this uh, i've got all the supplies they would need kind of stashed away right here so there shouldn't be a problem and if for some reason they aren't available over here i've got the resources by the elevator over in this area speaking of elevator that's how you get down here on your screen now you're going to see what it looks like in the early game there is a hole in the ground somewhere near your landing site and this is your access point and you can choose to send an explorer down uh if you want to right away and start exploring the underground keep in mind though it won't be able to come back up until you research the elevator technology once you get that you can build an elevator on uh, on that hole and that will allow you to transfer your drones and rc rovers as well as resources up uh up to the surface from the underground as well as from the surface to the underground so that's what this is. And of course, we've got the scrubbers down here and stuff too, just to make sure there's no maintenance cycle. Keep in mind that the elevator has two maintenance cycles. It may sneak up on you if you're not, if you're not careful with it because the underground is tracked completely separately from the above ground. So the bottom of the elevator has a maintenance cycle and the top of the elevator also has its own maintenance cycle. Here's what it looks like above ground uh, right now. So we're kind of covering our bases with this. I've got tons of these little drones or these little... Uh, yeah, shuttles moving all around. You can see both of our rockets have uh, left. Yeah, both of our rockets have uh, left their landing pads, so they should be arriving any minute now. There it is. Griffin number one has arrived. So let's go ahead and click this, and we're going to prepare for landing. So far, what I can tell anyway is a lot of these asteroids are kind of randomly generated. Uh, so you never really know what kind of shape you're going to get, how much landing room there is, what you're going to find on the surface. But we can definitely see that there's many anomalies on the surface of this one. So that's going to work out really well. On the surface, we can also see lots of polymers sitting around. And every once in a while, you'll see exotic minerals also sitting around. Uh, for this asteroid, it doesn't look like we're going to have to do any landscaping. That's one thing I like to look at because you can use your landscaping tools here to make ramps. Um, a lot of times these are not flat surfaces, so you might have to ramp yourself down and that takes time. In this case, we have two deposits. There's 36 in this one and there's 35 in this one. And this is the, the resource we're looking for, the exotic minerals. This one's a deep exotic mineral, actually. So... One's underground, one's deep. So if I didn't have the technology for scanning deep, 
uh, resources and being able to take uh, advantage of it, I wouldn't even be able to have this now. So there is that too. So why don't we take and uh, land our griffin somewhere where it's not going to be in the way, but it also needs to be close to where we're uh, going to be extracting things. I kind of feel like maybe right here is a good spot. So we're going to land right here. At the, at the top of the screen during this entire process, you're going to see that you have how, uh, how much time you have remaining. Nine souls, 17 hours. If you do not get off of the surface of this in time, by the time this hits zero, you're going to lose your stuff. So don't, don't, you have at least prompt this uh, thing to take off on time and then it will take off. But I've had this thing, like I've lost a rocket before because I wasn't paying attention. So you got to pay attention to it. Thankfully, I've got lots of time between these, so it shouldn't be that much of an issue. All right, so as this thing lands, we all have all the same rules we have on the surface of Mars, dust radius and things like that. And I want to showcase one of the cool little new additions that you can get for free with this expansion as well. Even if, uh, sorry, not for free with this expansion that you get with this update, the free update that's associated with this. Um, and there's lots of other types of buildings too. Like for example, in the DLC, there are drone hub extenders now, which take exotic minerals, uh, but you can extend the range of a drone hub by placing one of these and then your drones can go twice as far potentially look at all of these anomalies oh my gosh i'm so happy i brought this explorer wow uh okay so what we're gonna first want to do is we're gonna lay down the prefabs we have for the micro g auto extractors and they're gonna be able to build these we're gonna need power just like anything else and of course it's on an asteroid we can't use wind power so you're gonna need to bring either uh resources to build a fusion reactor pretty expensive but if you're going to be there for a long time and you're going to be doing a lot of things on an asteroid this might be worth it i've seen asteroids that had like 18 deposits 20 deposits metals and and stuff all over the place and we could have been there for two weeks getting as many things as we could and in that case it might be worth it building a fusion reactor for this particular one here though i'm just going to build a solar array i think uh, actually there's not a whole lot of room for that so why don't i just build a bunch of different solar panels for my playthrough because of different technologies and stuff that i've unlocked it's actually significantly cheaper for me to build these little individual panels than it is for me to build space wise uh special panels but we're gonna go ahead and bring in at least uh i think maybe this many and uh then we're gonna put in at least two accumulators here and here and uh, then we're gonna go ahead and put power cables. Now I have super cables as part of my breakthroughs, so I won't have to build them. I also have super pipes. I, I've done this from scratch. I did not receive this. I haven't used a single cheat, nothing. This is just like a Goldilocks save. And I'm thankful because it's actually speeding up how long it, it takes me to do this video for you. Uh, so we're gonna take the, not the infrastructure, here he goes, uh, Micro-G auto extractors. We're gonna go ahead and um, get that started and we're gonna go ahead and get this started. Now, if I'm curious, this is part of this new update, if I'm curious about, you know, different distances and stuff or placing buildings, I can now hold control. This is built into the free update for the game. If I hold control, it will show me the dust range for everything that's in this, uh, th that's in range that I can see. So in other words, I can see what the dust of that rocket's gonna do. Now, since I don't really care about that, since you know this is the only rocket I'm landing here and this stuff's gonna be gone and extracted by the time this lifts off, I don't really care. But that's a good thing to, to keep in mind if you're playing this game yourself with a free update. Uh, you can hit control and you can place things outside of dust range now uh, really easily. They've also integrated a lot of other things into the UI that used to be for mods. So there's lots of more details for you to look at, as well as a really quick snap feature where you click certain resources and it'll zoom you around to your different grids that you have. Um, so that's all stu that stuff's all pretty cool. Okay, so I want these guys to build these as fast as possible. We're gonna get the battery stuff sorted out and I need to give them a depot for exotic minerals. This is not included in the universal depot. So you need a depot specifically for exotic minerals if you want them to be able to move it around. Uh, finally, I'm gonna go ahead and get the power cables sorted out here. And again, I have super cables, so I don't have to buy them, but you may not have that. Okay. So the Explorer, I'm just going to queue this up. We're going to have you go, uh, let's go to the technology first. And then uh, let's go to, we'll hold shift and we'll scan that one. Then we'll scan uh, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. I think alternatively, I could just put this in auto roam mode or whatever, uh, but I'm going to make sure I'm going to do it specifically. So these things are going to start working as soon as the, the drones and stuff build it out. 
Okay. Now, I'm going to head to the other asteroid because we are ready to go with that one too. So, um, why don't we head to this one? Anomaly there we go. And uh, we're ready to land on this one, too. It's a little bit different. It looks a little dark. It's actually nighttime, I guess, on the surface, so that makes sense. This one has some water. If we wanted to, we could drop a Micro-G habitat here, the water tank and all that stuff, and start performing electrolysis. And we could uh, go ahead and extract from this even faster. The automated ones that don't require people, they extract at a rate of five. But if we were to use the mining station, we could have a base production of 20 and it requires people. So if you are on a time crunch and uh, there's a lot of resources available, it might be worth it to bring people and to set that up there. If there's water available, make sure there's water. Otherwise you cannot have people on the surface. All right, so this surface has um, a couple of other resources if we wanted to extract from them. Uh, one of these is the deep rare metals. There's an anomaly over here. And we also have exotic minerals sitting on the surface. So that's pretty cool too. And we're gonna wanna be in range of those to take advantage of it. So for this one, I think I'm gonna land the rocket right about here. Even though it's a little bit further away from the deposit, it's gonna allow my drones to automatically go and scavenge up uh, the other stuff that's nearby. So I'm gonna drop it here. Uh, once again, we're gonna need to have the exotic minerals depot and we're gonna need to have a universal depot. We're not gonna bother with the water this time. And then we just need to set up our power grid and stuff and get things going. So I think I'm going to go ahead and make the panels uh, here, here, uh, here, and uh, here. There's only one deposit, right? Yeah. And actually, I don't even need this much power because there's only 18 here and I've got 10 days. So there's really no reason to build this many. I think I'm gonna go ahead with three here. Um, I might I might upgrade this just so it goes even quicker, but again, it's not really all that necessary. So the rocket's gonna land and do its thing. There we go. And with the Explorer out, we can go ahead and start getting these anomalies sorted out as well. Research complete. Awesome. Uh, I'm gonna to wanna to get a power accumulator because that way we can work through the night. And uh, there's also a lot of other random events that are in the game as well. Because you have recon centers, you can also observe stars way out in the, like you can observe the galaxies far, far away. And you're gonna have lots of different scientific discoveries and you can choose how to focus that stuff for different benefits. Um, sometimes you'll discover dark matter or something and you'll be able to, you know, do you wanna post your findings now or do you wanna make sure about it? And if you're wrong, is there gonna be a penalty for that? Uh, there's, there's all sorts of different new uh, random events that happen in the game when you get the recon centers and stuff too. Okay, so I'm gonna drop the micro G extractor here. And then we're going to get the power system sorted out and bring that all the way over like that. So these guys are going to get on this. They're going to do all the things. And uh, it's like we have most of the rare, most of the surface stuff. This stuff is not in range. So I might go ahead and maybe do that specifically. Just click one of the drones and say, hey, you go get that kind of thing. Uh, you can totally do that too. But we're going to let them... We're going to let them get on with this and head back to the other the asteroid so that we can see if it's working or not. Got the... Some anomaly analyzed, reducing the cost of our text and stuff. That's pretty nice. Radiation caused power buildings to malfunction. Uh-oh. Power buildings are damaged. What happened? The radiation. Why have you done this to me? Okay. It'll, it'll get fixed and worked out. Uh, I got to get my power cables to do this and like this. I think that will be sufficient if, as long as it's daytime. I want to see it working just to make sure it is. And, well, it is working because we have exotic minerals in the depot. So I know it's working. There it goes. Yep. Uh, okay. So all these things are working now. This guy's going to get all these anomalies. Let's head back to the surface of Mars really quick. So one thing that I like about this DLC is it, it kind of gives you this multi... I want to say multi-dimensionality to the game. Uh, it really just adds layers upon layers of different tactics and different challenges. And it causes you to have to pay attention to a lot of other things at the same time. It also gives you a little bit more of an incentive in the late game. Like, at this point in the colony, I would probably call it a day. I'd be like, you know what? We win. GG. But now there's a new challenge. How do I make colonists survive the underground? Can I explore the underground? And how, I got to clear it all out and make it safe. And how do I get that all to be done, right? There's a lot of elements to that. And, um, you know, 
it, it just adds this extra thing for you. It's all very dark, so as you're going through and exploring, you might want to make sure you build these light tripods. I want to actually explore a little bit with you guys. So this is my RC commander. There's, there's eight drones here, and they're currently recalled. So let's go exploring really quick. I have open farm done. Yeah, I haven't done any terraforming in this save at all. No green planet stuff at all in this save. So as I as I roam around here, you're seeing like it's really dark, right? So if I don't want this to be dark all the time, what I can do is I can get my my drones out, and we can just go ahead and put in a little light tripod. And we can kind of build these anywhere. They do not require resources to do. So you just simply can place them as long as the I just had to place it in a place where it's not clear. So that's that's good. Now they have to clear the ground because I'm just fantastical that way, I guess. Ground's being cleared. Um, you can speed that up too if you want it by putting down a, uh, a place. Received. Like I actually have a deposit or a, a place to put waste rock in range. So they're going to use that instead. But, but then you get the lights and then you can continue on and that will always be lit up for you. So you can see your different paths and stuff as you roam around. I want to show you some debris. This is late game for me. Uh, you can see it's Soul 209. Um, so it's, there's been a lot of cave-ins, right, throughout the course of this play. So there's a whole lot of stuff. So if you want to clear these cave-ins, sometimes you're going to see cave-ins on top of cave-ins, and it's going to take a while. But if you have the research to clear them, you can put your drones to work. They'll clear them relatively quickly, and then you just got to keep clicking them. The Oort Cloud. We've managed to confirm the existence of the Oort Cloud. For a long time, the Oort Cloud was only hypothesized to exist, but even though it was considered likely, we had no concrete proof. The cloud is mainly made up of icy uh, planetismals and is believed to be the origin of many, if not all, Haley-type comet, comets Halley type comets in our inner solar system. This is not a good day for reading for me, clearly. In any case, the discovery allows us to choose something. We can have more scientist applicants if we want more science on an ongoing basis. We can just take $5 billion in funding. You can see I've maybe done a few funding things <laughs> in my time. I also have a lot of genius applicants and stuff as well. So my science output is ridiculous right now. Um, I got the breakthrough that gives me science for access power as well. Yeah, so I'm just, we're just kicking out science like crazy here. Uh, but I'm, I'm just going to take whatever. It doesn't matter. I've never seen 100 billion in my cash before. So uh, I guess that's cool to see that at least. Okay, so we'll clear this out. And then I'm going to drop a light tripod in here too, just so I can, you know, keep an eye on the place. And uh, what's this? Decontaminating RTG. Is this on the... Wait, where is this? I've never seen this before. We have located the RTG debris and are ready to commence our cleaning operation. If successful, it should reduce the radiation levels on the asteroids. This is an event specific on this asteroid. I have not seen this before, and I've done maybe a dozen asteroids in this play. I think I've done about, yeah, 12 to 15 asteroids somewhere around there. I haven't been keeping track. I have not seen this yet. So it's really cool that I haven't seen everything yet. Nice. Um, while this is probably the safest option... We could use the RXC Explorer. Got it. While this is probably the safest option, the lack of precision tools on the rover makes it difficult to clean the debris properly. Should it fail, it will only move the problem. We could let drones, which are much better equipped for the job, take care of the problem. It is possible, though, that exposure to the radiation will fry the drone's inner circuitry, causing permanent damage. The final option is to use this as a perfect research opportunity. We could send in a few colonists with protective gear to study the debris uh, uh, during cleanup. This would require those colonists to risk their lives. Unfortunately, we have no colonists nearby. I didn't bring any colonists on this thing, so yeah, I guess I can't use that. Let's use the drones. Fine, we'll see what happens. Success, but... The operation was a su success, but at a cost. The drones managed to fully clear the location, but shut down shortly after. Their inner circuitry has been completely fried. We reduced the radiation levels on the asteroid, reducing the damage for colonists and equipment. Okay, well, that happened on the asteroid. Very, very, very cool. All right, I was going to show you the underground stuff, but I actually, the anomaly that was on this asteroid revealed additional exotic minerals very high grade here very high grade here and a very high grade here so there's an extra 150 of these things on the surface that's nuts there's four and a half souls left so i've sent a second rocket uh over to here we're gonna have it land over in this area so it can start managing this stuff and we're gonna build another auto g extractor like as soon as possible so I i'm just trying to get that to happen as soon as i possibly can here so hopefully they start building this, but the, the rocket and stuff is going to come in 
and uh, I don't even know where I'm gonna land it. Probably over here. Um, just enough to kind of get the ball rolling on as many resources as possible. We're also gonna need additional power supplies for all of these different extractors and stuff. So uh, I'm gonna see about, yeah. So it's right about, I think right here will work as far as like not being in a dust pattern. Um, but pretty much all the other stuff is gonna have to be built on this side. It, we also discovered a metals deposit here but I'm not gonna take advantage of that because I've got enough metals already. Um, so we're gonna build additional solar panels. Probably one more power accumulator as well. On this side, we've got plenty of... Uh, yeah, we got we got plenty of polymers, so we can build that too. And then as soon as that rocket gets here, I'm gonna land it down right in here. I think I might be able to make a more convenient landing place if I flattened this, but there is no flatten tool there's just ramp and then there's clear so we can also like say clear this um but i don't i don't know about using this like it doesn't look like i can use this really anywhere yeah it's it's not for these it's that's those are landscaping things okay so when the rocket gets here we're gonna we're gonna drop it down but i just wanted to show you that you can get anomalies with your explorer and then all of a sudden have additional Research supplies complete. available to you which is kind of wild so there's the extra rocket. It was just sent here, and I can probably land this. Yeah, this is probably fine. We'll land it right over here. I'm also bringing the necessary electronics and everything else that's going to be needed to upgrade these. So we're just going to pop this here. Let's pop an exotic minerals depot right here. And uh, one more universal, I think, right over in this area. Funding received. All right, cool. Research so so complete. that's it. We're dropping that down. And we can hopefully start get started on building this. We almost have enough polymers delivered here already. Just get this up. And then what we're going to do, because we're only at four souls, we don't have a whole lot of time left. Um, this one is going to be done just fine. It's only nine and a half left. This one's got ten and a half left. So those are fine. But what we really need is for this one to haul ass. So we've got a hundred available here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the amplification upgrade and the magnetic extraction upgrade that I have available to me. And that's why I brought the electronics so we can get those upgraded. And uh, I think I might actually, since I have the polymers to do so, and an additional prefab looks like, uh, I'm gonna drop this right uh, here too. We're just gonna get we're just gonna get two of them dropped in here. And that's gonna hopefully let us really start extracting these things as much as possible in this limited time frame. But this is one of those situations. This is one of those asteroids where having people brought here with a habitat would have been good. I didn't know that these deposits existed before, but it would have been good because there is a water source here that has a very high grade. We could have had a lot of people here for a week, um, uh, more than a week. But uh, unfortunately, I just didn't notice those anomalies. Let's see what's going on with this one over here. Notice how the asteroids, they, the timer is kind of like this red shade that slowly moves its way down. Uh, but you can hover over top of it and see specifically how much time is left. In this case, five souls. And uh, this one here actually does not have any more deposits. I think that's it for this. Yeah, that's pretty much it for this. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get uh, salvage on these and we don't have to break down the power cables or anything but i mean i guess you can if you want to and then what we want to do here is we're going to tell this thing to edit payload i'm just going to go with auto for now uh, we're going to tell it to take as much as it as much as it can uh just with auto for the time being and it will dynamically adjust its requests based on the resources that it sees so if it knows it can get more it will adjust it to be more um, but you can also fine tune this as of recording this video. Anyway, you can only take multiples of five on resources. I'm really hoping they look into changing that. Um, it has been something that I've brought up to them. Um, the fact that you can only get five of, of each resource loaded in rockets has never really been a problem before, but because exotic minerals exist now and you're on a timer, you run into a situation where you might leave four behind just because it's not a multiple of five. So we can only bring 30 with us, even though there's 34 here. And that's that's an issue that you just have to work through. As of my beta version, that's just an issue that we're working through. All right, so are these up? Yeah, let's get these extraction too. So um, we're gonna start pulling a lot of power to do this stuff. But once these are done, uh, we can pull um, we can pull these off the network and then we don't have to worry about the power as much anymore. I want that battery up as, as fast as we can. 
There we go. And we can start having lots of power through the night now too. So uh, there we go. Oh, I really need this one built too. We're gonna run out of time on this one, man. There's so much here. We gotta haul ass, man. Let's go. And I wanna get the upgrades. We have, we have enough, yep. Let's get both of the upgrades. There we go. And we're pulling some juice. We got lots of power stored, so it's fine. Uh-huh. And seven and a half. Not working. Why? Are you out of power? Ooh. Because you're... Yeah, your amplification is done. You're done completely. You're about to get upgraded. Um, so I think I would rather shut you down and allow this to run than the other way around. I'd, I'm pretty sure I'd rather have that happen. So... Yeah, so you can micromanage this. And again, the goal isn't really to get all of them. It's just to get as many as you can because it's a limited resource. You can only get exotic minerals off of Mars and you cannot get them from Earth. So yeah, we have a super habitable planet. We can publish it and get a bunch of money and get a bunch of science. I do think that the random events that are caused by this DLC are too, are too powerful. I really hope they fix them because you can get a ridiculous amount of money in science. Uh, it's just absolutely overpowered amount of science and stuff from the recon centers right now. And we have new breakthrough technologies available now. Factory upgrade, nice. Uh, all extractors continue to extract small amounts when their deposits are depleted. That's, that's not broken at all. <laughs> and uh, a whole polarization. Buildings require maintenance less often. That seems like a good one. I might as well do that anyway. Uh, okay, so let's look underground. Right, so I've been exploring underground. You can see the, the different tiles and stuff. They kind of light up as I've been uh, slowly clearing debris and checking things out. Again, in your game, it won't be so barren. Mine is a little bit glitched because it's a really early build. Um, going along that note, I actually couldn't get the regular dome to build. So uh, this is the triangle dome. That did build. For some reason, there's like a tile. There's some tile around here that just can't be cleared for some reason. The drones won't clear it, so it never builds. But... The triangle dome's small enough to where it gets around that. So we've got the moxie set up down here for oxygen, water's in here, large oxygen tank, whatever. And uh, I've also got some smart houses and stuff just sort of integrated and built into this. So what we're going to do is we've got to bring colonists down here so that they can live and ultimately work in these two metals extractors for this really very high grade rare metals. And we can actually go ahead and prompt these to be upgraded too if we want to. So to get people down here, what you can do is, uh, oh, and our rockets from the asteroids are coming back, so that's nice. We'll go ahead and unload those rare, uh, those exotic minerals, if we can, too. Good. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to come over to the elevator. This is how you request everything that goes down. It's a little bit manual. I kind of wish it was a little more automated, but this is one of those things where it's like, I don't quite like how it's working, but I really don't have any ideas on how to improve it. So we're going to go ahead and do this. We go load cargo, and you basically just tell them what you want, and uh, they do it. So you have the resources you have on Mars, resources you have on, on the underground, and you see I don't have a whole lot of polymers down there, so we're going to go ahead and uh, get them this. Now, instead of having to click this multiple times like old versions, you can actually just hold it down, and it's really fast. Uh, so that, that part is a really welcome change to the game. I really like that. And uh, we're also going to send a bit more food. 150 food's pretty good, but I'm going to send some more down there too. And um, the biggest thing I think I want to send down, though, is colonists. So first I'm going to hit transport. All of these guys are going to get to work doing that, bringing all that stuff down there. But what I really need, there's my last rocket. There are so many rare metals, dude. Or exotic minerals, sorry. So many exotic minerals. All right, so all the shuttles are going to get to work bringing the resources over here to be loaded into this. Um, now the interesting thing about this is that the elevator actually serves as a drone hub as well. I didn't notice that until starting to record this video. Uh, it has a service area and it's really big, as well as it has available drones that you can assign to it. So if you want to, we can, for example, select uh, a few of these drones and I can say, hey, you look, you can, um, well, actually, no, see drone load, you have drones here. I'm not entirely sure how to give it to it though. Because I had it down, I had it down below, hang on. I just discovered this, so it's still new. So, like, see, this has 20 drones assigned to it down here. But I don't actually know how I assigned them. Hmm. That's interesting. Because if I tell them to use elevator, I think they go up. Let's test this. And it goes, and it's up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, that's how you send a drone up, or you send anything else up. So here's another RC commander, for example. We can get that added to our colony. But what we want to do 
is we want to send colonists down here. So we're going to go like this, load cargo, and I'm going to say colonists. And we really just need, I, th I guess, geologists, right? Because that's the stuff we're doing down there. So we can say we want 10 geologists to live down there. And um, let's have like two medics. And uh, yeah, that's kind of it, really. Maybe a couple of people who aren't specialized. That's probably fine. We have, uh, I guess we have a spot for 22 people to live what it looks like I don't know maybe that's not maybe this is just the maximum capacity that we can put down there but I think we're gonna do that so let's go ahead and hit transport and I think what will happen here the see is so so broken Th those random events need to be toned down a lot because I mean, look at this I'm 122 billion now yeah granted I am exporting from the space elevator so that's why too but um, I think uh, shuttles will bring them over to this and then they'll go down uh, to the underground here too so Let's head to the underground here and see if we get any any people. And then I want the people, of course, to be moved over to live here. And it looks like, oh, wow, that's instantaneous. Never mind. It's instantaneous. Okay. I'm just like, hey, move people down. And it, and it does. Okay, good. Oh, here they go. Oh, my gosh. They're running so far. They're just, they're just running. Oh, okay. We have a food shortage. Um, I hope they don't die. <laughs> um, now, there actually is no food in the area. I brought it down here. So there's food here, but um, I don't have any storage for it here. That's my bad. Um, I haven't had any people down here yet. So we're going to place food storage here and tell this we want like as much as possible to be brought here. So they'll hopefully be able to eat soon. <laughs> That'll be good. We'll put another food depot here. Obviously, we're not making food here. We can. But we're not making any food here, so you know it's uh, are we're gonna have to bring it from the surface, which won't be a problem. I have lots of it on the surface, like I have a lot on the surface, like 4,000 on the surface. Okay, yeah, 3,800. So plenty of food to bring down here. I just have to keep doing it, and that's the manual part I'm talking about. I kind of wish there was a way to. I guess how I would change it is I would say. I, I would have this be a minimum thing. So underground, I want a minimum of this many resources. And so if it ever falls below that, auto deliver to the elevator to bring it down below. That would be cool. And then I can also manage the minimum I want on Mars. So if I'm short up top, um, I don't send them down below, you know, to, to compensate for that. So like, I think maybe having a little bit more smarts in that regard would be a really cool way to do this because up until now, we haven't actually had two separate maps to manage resources on. And now that you have two separate maps, the user experience of moving them back and forth, I think could be a bit better on the automation side. But going on that note, I can easily send a ton of food down here, so I will. But it, it would be nice to have that be sort of automated, I think. Uh, definitely better. Actually, take a look at this, too. We have uh, a new asteroid is in range, and it's a C type. They mostly contain exotic minerals. Oh, let's go see what exactly what it has, though. That's the other one that doesn't have them. And we have a couple more here. Here it is. So two deposits. It says 29. Of course, we can set up a habitat if we'd like to, but I'm out of time for this video, so you can do it if you'd like to. I hope you guys enjoyed this. This has been uh, Surviving Mars Below and Beyond. There's a lot of stuff here. It adds to the game. And again, I, I, I wanted to show you a little bit better on the underground than I have. Um, I'm a little, have a it's, it's been kind of a, a thing with the beta to kind of work through it. But uh, for the most part, here you go. This is kind of what you can expect. Get underground, avoid the disasters, but also have to deal with potential rock slides and collapses and all that stuff. You see that my, my struts here, right? They're not really protecting this area. That's a bad deal. So I'd probably want to put a support strut like right next to this so i could probably go ahead and do that and uh tell them to hurry up on it against five exotic minerals to do that um exotic minerals are only useful in the underground so once you get them i just send them down right tell the elevator here's what i do actually here what, what i do is this i take the elevator i'd say exotic minerals payload here's what i want i want you to do oh it won't let me do it I was going to say, like, put this at like 10,000 and just hit go, and then they'll always bring them down. But again, I, I think having the minimums, setting minimums would be much better than, uh, than having it to be the way it is right now. But that's just me. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Check the details down in the description. 
I hope you will. Special thank you again to Paradox. Also, if you want to learn more information about this, we'll be playing it on YouTube, streaming it Tuesday morning, 9 a.m. Link in the description. You can get yourself a reminder for that stream. I'm starting to stream on YouTube now. We're moving things over from Twitch. It's exciting. I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.